Welcome to another edition of the Gridiron Report, brought to you by Red Ritter Outfitter, the fans' favorite since 1975. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. Well, mighty Joe, I don't know if uh, there's been more optimism and excitement around Texas Tech football, at least in the last decade. It's got to be since, uh, you know, the strange one was roaming the sidelines, uh, which was a, a while ago at this point. But the 2023 Big 12 schedule was released, and, of course, Texas Tech schedule, you know, is now known. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm actually really excited about it. I think a big part of that is, A, I think Tech's going to be pretty dang, dang good. And, B, there's some really nice games on the schedule. What, what are your overall thoughts about Texas Tech's schedule? Yeah, it's, uh, to me, the most interesting schedule that I can remember, wow. period. Well, you know, you it's, it's, it's and uh, I've been around a while. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, it's interesting to see some new blood. Yeah. You know the you know we got uh, BYU on the yes. schedule yes. in Central Florida. Uh, you know it's interesting that Tech isn't playing any of the Oklahoma schools, yeah. and I can't say I'm sorry about that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> given the way Tech has played those guys. Uh, and Iowa State is not on the schedule for the first time in a long time, yeah. uh, so uh, things have switched up a little bit. You know, finishing the season uh, down in Austin, yeah. uh, potentially that could be a we'll have to see, obviously have to see how the season plays out, but that could be a game with an awful lot riding on it. I'll go ahead and predict that right now. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I, I did a video earlier this week and I even said that there could be a lot of juice on that game uh, or with that game in terms of tech at, at UT. And when I think about the past matchups in, uh, on Thanksgiving or you know the day after Thanksgiving, there hadn't been a lot of juice around it because yeah, right. both teams have been kind of eh the past decade, to be honest, sure. with you know a couple exceptions here and there. But I think both teams could be poised. I think it's just situated to where, who knows with Texas? I mean, they're going to be talented. Who knows if they actually live up to it? Yeah. But I think this is going to be one one of Tech's better teams in, in a long time, uh, for a number of reasons. Which, of course, we'll get into that later. But just looking at the schedule, they start off at Wyoming, and in terms of a non-Power Five, Division One matchup, hey, that's pretty good. That's a that's a bowl team. Uh, Tech should be heavily favored, but still, it's there in Wyoming, and that's not a terrible game for what it is no absolutely not i mean if you're looking for that something between a really tough power five non-conference opponent versus a cream puff yeah yeah that's what you got there and uh you know look uh historically tech is only two and three against wyoming wow i didn't and know that, that yeah that's right now it's been a while since they played uh but still <laughs> here's a chance to get level with the cowboys and then you have oregon at home that's the marquee non-conference game and you know you have a home and home series with them uh of course, the main storyline, or one of the biggest storylines, is going to be Tyler Shuck facing his his old team. But uh, I mean, that should be a prime time, big time game, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. That's the biggest. That's the most uh, impressive non conference opponent to come into Lubbock since Arkansas in 2014. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So it's it's that kind of a game. So I'm thrilled to see something like that. Uh, hopefully, we're going to see more games like this. I mean, Tech played Oregon twice. I remember those games, 91 and 92, both close losses to tech mm -hmm. my tech uh and that's when oregon wasn't about anything they were they were no good right. whatsoever and i was ticked off when tech lost those games <laughs> so i'm still seething over that and let, let's get back at the ducks this time and then you host tarleton state uh the uh customary lamb for the slaughter you know which everybody has on their on their schedule i don't have a problem i mean this is a difficult schedule yeah. You, you know, it's a nice setup there on September 16th at the Jones before you start Big 12 play. And speaking of that, the next week, September 23rd, you start conference play at West Virginia. It's a team that you've uh, you really honestly you've handled here recently, but it's there in Morgantown. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, you're going to start off Big 12 play. You probably don't want to start off, you know, by playing at TCU right. or, or, or at K-State or something right. like that. So uh, this, I think this gives you a chance to get off uh, on the good foot here. Uh, you've owned those guys for a while, and you know until they prove otherwise, then I think Tech's probably got that one. Yeah, same thing with Houston, except you get them at home, and you, you know this time it has uh, more on the line with it being a conference game and a Big 12 game. But you have really dominated this series as of late uh, with Houston. So what do you think about that, that game the following weekend? Yeah, exactly the same thing. Uh, no, it was a double overtime <laughs> game yeah, this last year, right. wasn't it? That was a little too close for comfort. And so. Donovan Smith will be their quarterback. So. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So very interesting. Uh, uh, another good game, you know, I think. Yeah. All right. And then at Baylor, October 7th. Now, Joey McGuire said in his 
chat, he said it other places, but he said in his chat with uh, Inside the Red Raider subscribers that of all the games this year, the one he wished he had back was Baylor at home. And I agree with you. That's the one game where you're like, what? What happened? They didn't, you know, they got just really got pushed around. Uh, what are your thoughts on that one in Waco? Yeah, they, I mean, to, potentially that's the first huge game of the season. Yeah. I mean, I, I think Tech could be undefeated at that point. Now, obviously, Oregon, that's that's going to be tough. Yeah. Uh, but you get by Oregon, and uh, that could be the, the, the game that sort of, uh, if you win it, it, it catapults you yeah. on to future success. You lose it, and you're kind of back on your heels again, and you have to regroup and maybe slightly revise uh, your expectations a little bit. But that's that's going to be a really big game, and uh, I don't think uh, Coach McGuire wants to have a similar a repeat of what happened this last time. All right, then you'll be coming off the emotional aspect of that game in Waco the following weekend. You take on you host Kansas State. That's October 15th. Of course, they're the defending Big 12 champs, and they've really had your number. I think they've won seven in a row against Texas Tech. Even some bad Kansas State teams have beat beaten Texas Tech. Uh, I think that's another ginormous matchup, Money Joe. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, when do you get the monkey off your back, you know? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. and uh, West Virginia probably says the same thing about Texas Tech, yeah, you know? Houston, too. Yeah, and so, yeah, that's that's kind of the way it is when you're sort of a mid-level program. you got some teams that you whip up on and others that you just can't beat for anything. Uh, this is the latter. So that's going to be a very difficult game. You hope Tech uh, finally uh, pulls it off. And then you go to BYU, another one of the new Big 12 schools. Uh, according to Texas Tech Athletics, uh, the Red Raiders have never played a game in the state of Utah. Right, yeah. And, you know, BYU wasn't great last year, but, you know, very good program, very good following, great following. And, you know, it playing in Provo figures to be a pretty tough game, Joe, especially after coming off, you know, this will be the eighth game in a row without a, a bye. Right. Yeah, and that's that's the whole thing is uh, it's going to be a lot tougher playing there than, than playing in Lubbock. I mean, right. uh, they usually get between 60 and 65,000 people there, and uh, yeah, it's not going to be easy. And then finally, you get your buy, and I think it's a well-timed buy. I mean, I, it's you have one third of your regular season left. You know, who knows? Buys can be weird in terms of maybe they're hot and they don't want to break the hot. So, you know, that kind of thing. But on paper, and which is what we're doing, look at the schedule on paper. It figures to be a well-timed buy on uh, October 28th. And then you come back on a Thursday, November 2nd. And, and host TCU, which reminds me of the Fox game way back in 2000, or let's see, 2013, I believe it was. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, the bye is really good because the team yeah. that you're preparing for is TCU, right? right. I mean, uh, best team in the Big 12 last year, although they aren't the official champs, they made right. it to the national title game, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's, yeah, another really, really huge game there, and um, it's uh, the, the, the bye uh, should come in handy there, and hopefully that will give Tech a little bit of an advantage. Yeah, and since it's a Thursday game, you have a little extra time to get ready to go to Kansas. And with uh, Leipold, Lance Leipold being the coach there, that program appears to be on the rise. It's certainly the team was much better last year, and this is no gimme. You don't look at the schedule and say, oh, that's a W. they got to show up ready to play there in Lawrence, or, you know, Jayhawks could probably win that game. Yeah, it's, it's a possibility. I mean, uh, uh, Leipold is he's starting at a lower level uh, with Kansas than McGuire did at Texas Tech. Sure. He's got more work to do, but he's making the same sort of similar progress, I think. Uh, and he's been there a little bit longer than McGuire, but I think you can see both of these coaches accomplishing the same things with those re respective programs. Uh, and you know the fact that you're playing them there is going to make it a little bit more difficult. I believe Tech is something like 23 and two all time against Kansas or oh, wow. something yeah, like that. Yeah, so Tech right. is just. You know, there have been some teams, such as Texas, that have actually struggled yeah. against yeah. Kansas. Uh, Tech is taking care of business, and uh, let's hope that that holds true. And then November 18th, you host UCF, again, uh, one of the four new schools. You play three of the four new schools in the Big 12. You don't play Cincinnati in 2023, but you host UCF. Again, the team, kind of like BYU, isn't as good here recently as it had been, you know, what, five years ago or so. But, uh, you know, you want to start off on the right foot, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's right, and um, you know, it's it's just uh, Tech has never played in Central Florida. That's right. You know, it's just going to be. I, I'm the kind of guy I just like to see some some new blood, Same some here. things that I haven't seen yep. before, and something a little bit different to shake things up. So that's going to be, for me, just another interesting game from that standpoint. And then finally, you finish your game the day or your season the day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday in Austin against Texas on uh, was it November 24th. 
uh, you wrap your regular season. Like you said earlier in the video, Joe, I think there could be a lot riding on that game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, if, if Texas Tech accomplishes what we expect them to accomplish, uh, and Texas, even when they're down, they're usually better than respectable. You right. know, they're, right. so, they're talented. Yeah, yeah they're, they're obviously extremely talented. You got, I guess potentially, this could be the last time these Maybe. two teams yeah. meet. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess the, the terminus has never been officially put down, but we kind of assume this is the last season, right, for out. Yeah. You know, uh, this one or the next one. Or, and so, you know, potentially there's that riding on it as well. So, uh, and if so, what uh, sweeter way uh, to top off, to finish off the series than to beat them uh, in their own nest, you know. So, so why not? Yeah. And like we've said before, we're really excited. Both of us like the newness. There's some big marquee games. I think there's going to be some primetime national broadcast type games. You think of Oregon, BYU potentially, uh, Texas, of course, and then maybe you know, TCU too as well. So, uh, man, I can't wait. We have spring ball first. We're going to cover the heck out of that. But uh, for now, my Joe, great stuff as always. Thank you for watching. And until next time.